Hi everyone, my name is uh, Sebastiano Bertani. Yesterday after seeing other presentation, I decided to add my life story. In 2011, I had crazy ideas. This is not AI based. I love uh, complex projects and uh, ambitious ideas and crazy things to do. So this was my obsession. Then I got kids and I had to stop doing it because of my wife. The other obsession I had was about seeing uh, disaggregation as evolution. So we got fascinated by the story of uh, personal computers and basically Windows becoming the universal operating system. We saw the same thing in the, in the um, smartphone space with Android working on any type of hardware device. Apple clearly remaining the value leader, but Android winning in terms of volume. And we're basically starting to ask in 2011, uh, can that happen also in uh, networking? Can we build an operating system that can work on off-the-shelf devices and uh, give that kind of flexibility. So we were convinced enough to put together a team. Here you see some of the people. We were forced at that time to have the full stack of knowledge and, and uh, well, try to have that. From the firmware side, the cloud side, um, UX is a big part of that support. And now I want to tell you a little bit about the story of trying to do something as crazy as this uh, and the type of challenges that we had. Now we had uh, challenges that basically three layers and uh, it would take hours to talk about each of these. So it was a big challenge for me to compress this. Let's start from the cloud side. Down below we have an operating system. Up there we have the Play Store of uh, the application store. Now on the platform side, the complexity was to build something that could scale. And remember, we were a small team. And that could accommodate connections from the devices and the serve the interface for the customers. And it has to be easy to use. So you have South APIs, databases, front-end APIs. Easy, right? But that can scale pretty in a scary way the moment you try to make it work. So uh, I will try to save it, but we have Java down there to accommodate the incoming connections of the devices, all sort of databases, uh, relational databases, non-relational databases, uh, a bunch of APIs at the top to have software-defined networking, and then uh, an interface that works on any sort of device, and a lot of uh, accommodating services. You know, So this was not the com most complex part, but remember, you're a small team and you're trying to do something crazy. The second complex part was the operating system. How do you build an operating system that can work with off-the-shelf hardware and um, be interoperable, basically? So the key idea was, let's use the same source code for everything. And yes, everybody uses Linux. So uh, we started initially for OpenWT, then we realized that it's kind of not up to the task. We need to be in control of everything. And so we went to straight Linux and took control of our own destiny and our um, Linux distribution. The most complex part there was not really to put together this whole user space of uh, demons that talk in real time, each, you know, one another, was the bottom right part, the hardware dependent part. Now, in 2011, it was very easy because it's under the 211N allowed not to run any microcode on the chips, on the radio chips. So basically, we were in control of the full source code. And uh, Atheros chips worked great. Uh, if there was a stability or a performance issue, you could always change the source code and recompile everything. Now, that, so it seemed possible, right? That's how we started. Um, then AC came, and with that, microcode compiled and these binary blobs that you just sent to the radio, you don't control, have any control over them. And from that point on, uh, it was not, not possible anymore to rely on you know, the latest, most modern Linux version and then just compile it we had to become like everybody else and start using the uh, SDK from the chipset vendors and have to backporting, forward porting. We started wasting a lot of time on all that activity, which hopefully one day will go away. So for example, Purple Foundation is working there. Um, so it just became complex, but we kind of made it. So we basically compile our OS for, over time, after three generations of this platform, I would say more than 120 devices here. You just see a few of them. So the idea you can, you can run this on these type of devices. So of course, we're talking about some very, let's say, solution for um, modest requirements in terms of type of deployment. Now, I wanted to show you a little demo of the dashboard. I will use a video just to be faster here. I know I'm taking a risk using YouTube, but Wi-Fi seems to be working. 
You can see this is something live, this is something everybody can use. Uh, we do have some nice tools integrated in the platform, uh, real-time statistics, historical statistics. You basically connect devices, plug devices on, uh, you know, on the internet, they just connect. You can start managing them from here. You have centralized configuration, all sort of these things. So um, this is a nice video of a tool that allows to easily install the operating system on existing devices. This is a uh, ubiquity um, mesh device. In, in basically less than one minute, you can install the operating system, even on an existing network. So this also works for, ground, for Brownfield. Um, now, this aggregation is kind of fascinated as a concept. The problem is real uh, installation and solutions require to rebundle things together. So how do you do that? Um, well, the first way is to making it easy to install the operating system on off-the-shelf devices that you can buy through standard distribution. Uh, that's how we started, and that's the part of the video that you saw. Um, the second way, and this came in 2016, uh, we started having OEM partnership with some hardware vendors that wanted our operating system to be shipped with their devices. Of course, this scaled way better. It's not as disaggregated, because you're not combining two things, but um, from the distribution standpoint, that is the challenge that um, you have to overcome. And then there are emerging standards, like Open Wi-Fi. We have been behind the scenes, or worked very actively initially in that group. I think that is very promising. That is what is kind of promising to simplify uh, this disaggregated approach. But all the challenges of you know, compliance, of distribution, uh, they're all still there. So I think it's kind of taking some time. It will get there at one point. And we're basically working to be a mature controller for open Wi-Fi devices. Now, the third challenge is the application part. Um, and the reason why this is interesting, and this, the reason why this connects back to the title of the presentation, is that uh, we realize Wi-Fi became way more than just a way to get connectivity over time. It really became a platform. So inspired by Android, we thought, can we deliver those cool things that a lot of independent software vendors are doing through a concept like, you know, uh, the application store. We already have an integration with Fing, for example. You can use that to identify devices or cloud for y to have advanced guest access. But we had spent a lot of uh, the last couple of years discussing with a lot of vendors what we could do together. And ideally, you can actually do things like IT asset management, just enabling a container inside the device, LAN sweeper. Or you can bring ready resource management. Maybe there are companies that can do that better than other companies. So we want to have, as an option, Apricom, for example. Um, that's not the only option. A Bumblebee Labs um, to uh, basically do uh, location intelligence or Ivani to count people. That can go as far as Wi-Fi based vision. Um, with our friends at Hamina, we designed together a kind of integration that would basically allow having real-time information and switch from one platform to the other one and even use you know, the kind of tools that you can have with Hamina um, on these classes of devices. And if you imagine the typical installation Wi-Fi in the low end, you know, a lot of professionals just throw access points here and there because the customers don't want to pay to, for design, for site surveys. And um, a platform like this could basically allow to make it easier for that space to um, enjoy this type of services. Now, a big part of that is education. So there are a lot of professionals that don't come to these kind of events. They should. They should learn about how to do these things. Bringing something like um, RF design on top of a platform that can basically be enabled easily is a big step to make it easier for them to use these type of solutions. And of course, we have, if you want to look better inside of what's going on inside the client device, you have numerous networks and then basically. Now, the idea is, um, the applications, uh, in a sort of concept like Android inspired, can basically bring more value and improve, and improve Wi-Fi and the way it works also for you know, everybody else, let's say. But at the same time, uh, the install base and um, the network partners we're putting together can basically become also an acquisition channel for applications. And there are a lot of applications, the ones you just mentioned before with those nice logos, all of them are struggling to find access to market. So I think this is uh, the kind of synergy that we're trying to build. What you see there is our install base. We have more than 56,000 devices worldwide, and um, that's growing. So get in touch with me. I, we are very interested in discussing you know, um, 
strategic partnerships and do cool things together. So thank you very much. <laughs>